Hey planners and schedulers, it's a new year and that means that for all of you on-premise users of Primavera P6, there's a new version available for you to upgrade. That's what I'd like to do in this video, is talk about what's new in Primavera version 24.12 that's available as of January 2025. Ready? Let's do it. Let's go through and understand some of the cool new things that are available to you now in 24.12. Here's what I do to figure out what's new and what's different. Oracle has this tool called the P6 Cumulative Features Tool, and you can kind of compare two different versions, and that's what I've done. I've compared version 23.12 to version 24.12, and I got a report. That's what we're looking at here. So you can see where these changes originally, uh, what release they came from, but let's go through the highlighted more interesting ones, because I'm not gonna cover them all. For example, this one, timesheet approvals, we're gonna skip it because not too many people are using timesheets that I'm aware of, but if you are, check it out. There's some new features here for you. This one definitely caught my attention. Quickly and easily unlink activities. You can now unlink activities from their successors and predecessors using a new unlink button or feature on the menu. So let's jump into P6 and I'll show you how this works. Okay, I created a very simple little example for you here with a bunch of ABC activities linked together. What you'll find is if you highlight a bunch of activities, let's highlight A through to E here, on the edit menu where we had only link activities before, we now have unlink activities. Let's see what happens. Unlink, are you sure? Yes. All the relationships are gone from between those activities. But notice it doesn't remove all of the activities because activity A is still linked here to activity F, but because I didn't highlight activity F, I didn't unlink those two. So now we can edit and link that's a feature that I love actually in my training, show people how we can get that link button and put it up here on the toolbar, which saves you a couple of mouse clicks. I will probably do the same with the unlink, put it up on the toolbar so that now we can unlink. So I like this feature, it's pretty cool. Thumbs up. Okay, here's the next one. Choose whether to import responsible managers from XER file. Responsible Manager is now available as a data type in the global tab when you're importing XER files. By default, P6 in previous versions would always import the Responsible Manager if it didn't exist and it would add it into your OBS global data. Now, for those of you who work in large organizations, this is a nightmare. We were adding so much extra uh, data and screwing up our Responsible Manager OBS structures just by importing. It's one of the reasons we have lots of restrictions in organizations on importing files into databases because stuff goes everywhere. So now we have the ability to limit whether we're going to import Responsible Manager. How about I show you where you'll find that? Okay, so back into P6, if we were going to import a project, just a regular XER file. And let's see, I'll just grab a simple XER file. I've got one loaded up here already. It's when we get to this update project options screen that you'll find it. So in these configurations, if I modify the configuration, you'll now see here responsible manager is in the global data type listing. It wasn't there before and we can say do not import responsible manager and hence keep our OBS responsible manager settings, hierarchies, pristine. That is a thumbs up. All right, what's next? Improved clarity in global change reports. Again, this is a, just a small little thing, 
Um, I don't find I'm running global changes all that often, but I know lots of people do rely on global changes. When you run a global change, before you run it, you get a little screen that shows what's going to happen. And now they've added some more information on that screen. Basically, they've added the project ID and the WBS code. So you can have a broader picture of what's going to change before you go ahead and commit changes. Okay, let's go to tools and to global change. And I've created a really simple global change here that does nothing but look for activity with an ID of A1000 and change it to A1001. That's all it does. Uh, if I click change on this global change, um, I get this report. And this is a review of what's going to change in your project so you can kind of review things before you commit. And now we have the project ID and the WBS code. So project ID is a great idea because often we, we have multiple projects open. We might not be aware that we're actually running a global change on two projects. WBS code is really nice to see to make sure I am targeting the activities in the particular WBS that I wanted. Sometimes activity ID is not enough to really know. So that's cool. Uh, that's another, it's a thumbs up. It's another thumbs up. Okay, what's next? Um, preview changes before committing to updating a baseline. Hey, I like that. I almost never use the update baseline feature, um, but if you do, now you can preview more richly what's going to happen to that baseline. After you have previewed the changes, you can adjust the settings to preview again as often as you need before updating the baseline. Okay, it's kind of mid, I'll go with it, you know. Okay, what's next? Export the entire hierarchy code value path to CPP. This is probably for a very small subset of users. Uh, CPP is related to people working for the Department of Defense. It's a certain uh, format that they like to extract data from P6 from. So they've made some uh, additional um, data elements that are gonna be part of that. So that's a thumbs up for those people who are working on CPP type of projects. Some of the other things here are not that exciting. It's, it does say performance improvements. The performance of checking projects in and out for SQLite databases has been improved. Honestly, I don't know who is checking projects in and out for SQLite databases, but I, I guess you're gonna get some real performance benefits <laughs> for something that almost never happens. Um, this one I do like as well. Milestone activities support all relationship types. Now, if you've been with P6 for a while, you remember that this is how it was long ago. If you had a start milestone, you could have any relationship type to that start milestone. You could have, say, a finish to start relationship. But somewhere in the midst of the last couple of years, a change was made so that a start milestone could not have a finish type relationship to it. It could only have a start relationship to it. And that seemed really smart. But you know what happened? Is that all of those legacy projects that had those uh, incompatible or those weird relationships, they were all messed up now. So this caused a lot of problems, and I think enough people complain that Oracle has now decided to put it back the way it was and let it be. So that, again, is a thumbs up, uh, not for making anybody's lives better, but for not ruining other people's lives and all of their projects. So that's a thumbs up. Uh, there's a couple other just minimal things here. Uh, there was a rename, there's an improved code signing. Again, some of this is IT stuff that maybe we don't care too much about. Now, if you happen to be an EPPM user, you can also run this report on EPPM. For those of you who are running EPPM and working in the web side of P6, with EPPM. There are, again, some notable improvements, uh, some things around the user administration, 
standardized user settings with ease, summary bar label rolls up, roll up data fields, drag milestones and remaining early start dates on Gantt chart, that sounds cool, easy access to audit data, and a bunch of other things. Uh, open P6 directly from an activity email. Um, improve clarity about the database you're logging into. That sounds really good, actually. So if you are an EPPM user, you can also use this cumulative features report to see what's different in the website on EPPM. I'll put a link in the bottom of this video so you can check it out. But that's all I have for you right now. So if you're interested, go and grab the latest version of Primavera P6. We've got a download install video. You can check that out as well. And if you like this video and got lots of value, please subscribe and like. That helps the algorithm. It really helps us get more eyeballs on these kinds of videos and this kind of content. And last but not least, go to planacademy.com for all of your Primavera P6 training needs. We have courses and bundles. Check it all out. I'm Michael. Happy planning. I'll see you again soon in another video.